Welcome, Flip Clock fans. I've got a confession to make. I go to Goodwill all the time. I don't really drive past one without eventually coming back and stopping in to see what's going on. I mean, every Goodwill I go by, I eventually get into. So this is one of my favorite Goodwills. Uh, I happen to work in an area um, where you can have... Um, we have special parking for your other car, if your other car happens to be a horse and a buggy. Now, usually in these Goodwills, I find things like this um, and some other wild and crazy stuff. Uh, I just like going in there sometimes and not buying anything to see what I find. Now, look at this conglomeration. Uh, only a Goodwill where you see something like that. Now, here's where I almost always go in this one, uh, Salem, Indiana Goodwill. This is the electronics place. And I recently found some real something really awesome. It was in that spot right there, in fact. But today, hey, wait. I need that. I've actually been looking for that. Nine bucks. 12-speed Oster blender. It's got to be mine. Anyway, so what did I get? And how does it relate to flip clocks? Well, I've got this sucker apart. You can check it out here. It's the turntable. It says it's made in Great Britain. What was going on with this device, which, as you can see, is called a Clarinet 92. That's the model name. There evidently were a lot of different types of clarinets, depending on what, um, you know, units and devices and things they had connected to them, cassette tapes or whatever, uh, whatever it was. But what was going on with this one was that the volume was all buggered up, had to be cleaned, and the balance was buggered up. But look at this, 8-track tape. That's why I had to have it, because I'm going full retro. Um, if you don't know what 8-track tape is, then you're probably younger than 30. This, this was the big deal back in the 70s. And a lot of people invested highly in these. It was, they thought it was going to be the big thing, you know. They were in a lot of cars at the time. And then sometime in the late 70s, even up into the early 80s, they just disappeared, uh, replaced by the cassette tape. And of course, you know, they were replaced by the DVD, CD, I mean, and uh, then electronic, and gosh knows whatever. I can't keep up with this stuff. But anyway, this device here was made in Taiwan. Let me get a look here at the, at the uh, manufacturer here. And this may be familiar to some. It's a realistic. That's a Radio Shack brand. Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation out of Fort Worth, Texas. So we've got Texas, Great Britain, and Taiwan all tied together. Now look here at this box. Did that look like an old guitar or something? It's all, it's just wood and it's glued together. Now that hole, I've removed a plug there. That's an access hole. I had to learn how to get this sucker apart. And I'm going to tell you, that was not easy. There, I couldn't find an instruction on how to do it. These people are tight-lipped on how to restore these things, evidently. Or else I wasn't looking in the right place. Now, this little nut here, that took me a while to figure out how to get that off. Because what you had to do is reach up that little access hole and get that off. But I, I actually got it off, but all you have to do is flip it up. Now, you see, right there is where it kind of slides in. And that's where you get it from. Uh, the other side is where you get the from the access hole. So you would have flipped that nut up lift it up in the back left there, and then slid out. Now those screws, those are called uh, transport screws or something like that. So when you transport the device, you're supposed to screw that down so the turntable doesn't fly off because that turntable is just resting on springs, on a bed of springs. Now I'd, I'm talking to you about all this stuff because I had no idea about this. I, I'm not into phonographs or anything, but I'd, 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 and I'm not going to after this. I'm not going to get into it further. But I just want to, to get this unit going, hopefully get everything nice so I could have it in Flip Clock Fan Studios as, uh, as something to play music other than my, my little Flip Clock radios. Now look at this little guy. Look at that. I mean, he looks real excited to see me. And, and, I, and I looked at that and I had got this apart and I thought, well, what's that all about? Why do they have that one thing tied down like that? And I got all lost and I didn't know what I'd done and put it back together two times and it sounded horrible. So the two arms go here. Either side on the outside. And there's other thing 
connects right there in the middle. It's sort of like a grounding thing, evidently, because it will not work unless it's grounded there. So after some trial and error, I, I figured that out. When I took it apart, I guess I wasn't very careful. I just kind of pulled that off and it came off very easily. Now I've just taped that down so it wouldn't fly all over the place when I'm moving things around. But the other thing I had to do was to replace the needle. Now when I was a kid, my brother always did that, so I had no idea what I was doing. And again, I could find these online. The needle itself cost about half of what I paid for the whole unit at Goodwill. So it was a lot into it. But with the new needle and the cleaning of the device, you see I've got everything kind of tied down in here. It's neat how they did that. So I've got it all tied down. Those two uh, things there get connected to the phonograph. And then there, those holes there, they have. Uh, that's how you screw down the, the other device, the unit that I slid in earlier. So here's the one I've got it turned up. As you can see, it's turned normally turned down like that, and it's turned up. I'm, the only reason I'm showing this is if someone stumbles upon this video who's looking for the clarinet 92 and trying to figure out how in the world you get this sucker apart. But you do have to take the phonograph off. There's no other way. So this one, let's see there, this one right here, you leave that in the down position. So you slide that in like so. Again, those are transport screws, and once you get that in there, if you were going to transport it any long distance, you would screw those down, and it would pull that, pull that uh, phonograph, that turntable down, and hold it steady for transport. That's all it is. Of course, that took that took me a while to figure out what that was all about. Google, of course, after a while, gave up its secrets. So after I slid that down there, you reach up and you flip that nut. I didn't show that part, but yeah, it's magical. Everything's working. Now I'm using, in the back there, there's two speakers that, that came with it. I don't know if they were original to the unit, but they sound pretty good. But then in a second here, I'll show you something else I found on the same day. And uh, I was shocked. It was just, it was just my, my full retro day. And the thing's working great. Got some classic music coming out of this thing. I'm very happy, happy with it and surprised. Uh, family was kind of surprised I got it too. So this is the other thing I found on the same day. I couldn't believe it. And I thought, well, I'll take a chance on these two. JVC SP XS5 WD. So combine that with this system, this stereo system, 8-track, radio, phonograph. You combine those speakers with this and, I'm t and the new needle. And I'm telling you, it was fantastic. But this is an image from eBay of the unit. And you see what I'm missing there. I'm missing that acrylic top, and that seems to be very common. So I took some poplar planks, that's quarter-inch poplar, glued them together, then stained it. And I had to glue it. That, took, that was a little tricky because it, there's no extra room there, and I wanted to be able to play the record without taking that off all the way. That top there is just a piece of glass off a table I found sitting outside junk. But I made it about flip-clocks by putting a flip-clock on top. So I've got my speakers there on the floor. There are tower speakers. You can see that one on the left there. And that's, so that's my little setup now. And I can just, if I'm working on my flip clocks, just turn and push a button and, and listen to some tunes. And so if you ever find your way to Salem and you're driving your buggy, we got a spot for you here. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.